Hey, welcome back to Evil's Comics. This guy right here is Evil Mike, and I got a review for you today. From Image Comics, we're going to be talking about Nightclub, issue number two. It is written by Mark Millar, art by Juanan Ramirez, colored by Fabiana Mascolo, and then letters by Clem Robbins. Um, I'm sorry if I mispronounced any of those names. It's no disrespect. Before we get started on the review, please like, comment, subscribe on this guy's channel right here. It does help a whole bunch. Um, all of it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just a matter of clickety, clickety, click, and I might show up in your search every now and then, you know? Um, but hey, if you like the, the reviews, hit the bell. You never know when I'm dropping them. Um, the book basically is pretty easy so far. Uh, we are with Danny, our main uh, vampire, because that's what this is. It's a, and I want to say Danny is that one right there. Um, <clears throat> but basically, it was a boy that had been in an accident. He was pretty much going to be a vegetable. He was uh, given the ability to turn into a vampire by Detective um, Lasarcus. Lasarcus. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong, but. Um, basically the detective was trying to um, create like this superhero vampire team of vigilantes to go out on the town and, and try and do some good and he was actually looking for people that were like you know had nothing to lose kind of thing um, with Danny's case it, him being like so his back was broken and stuff like that he was gonna be like a vegetable for the rest of his life so this gives him an, like kind of a second chance and him getting to do some good you know kind of thing so basically we are catching up right where the uh, first issue left off Danny is uh, trying to you know uh, tell his friends Sam and Amy Sam and Amy um, that he is a vampire now and that he has powers um, of course like any regular people may I don't know but they end up taking off running um, Amy gets away, but Sam ends up almost getting killed by this truck, which Danny ends up like poofing um, and kind of saving him at the last second. What you see, he poofs into this taxi cab. The taxi cab gets all mad, um, tells him to get the F out of their car, and uh, even pulls a gun and stuff. And then they poof again and end up in a restaurant. Um, in this book, it does play off of normal rules of movie style vampires. You know, um, they are afraid of. Uh, crucifixes they can't go out in the sunlight um, that that kind of thing so the poofing is actually um, Danny turning into mist and that's how he's able to but I mean they do have the super strength super speed and they kind of go into that because he's gonna you know get into that with all his friends but I didn't want to you know with all the poofing going on I don't want to you know get you all weirded out but eventually Danny does um, poof Sam on top of this building so he can't run anymore and he's finally like look I'm, I'm Danny I'm a good guy you know I'm not gonna hurt you I'm just trying to tell you I got superheroes um, he does mention that Amy is still running um, and he she's like 10 blocks away from where they are and he eventually decides to call her instead of tracking her down to you know instead of scaring her more he does eventually get him back to I guess his little like headquarters or whatever they don't really state where they are it's not really important but he basically goes over the hey I'm a vampire you know I got powers uh, this is kind of crazy and they ask some general like important questions uh, how, how does the world not notice that you're completely healed after your accident and he explains that the hypnosis part of vampire is a real thing and the detective actually hypnotized the hospital and his parents and so they they just think he had a couple minor scratches that kind of thing um, but we do get to the point where he is showing off his vampire like powers as far as speed and strength um, and then gets to the main reason why he wanted to um, you know kind of tell Sam and Amy but basically he wants to give them vampire po vampire powers just like he has you know when you you know you and your friends when you're down they're down when you're up you got to bring them up too and that's kind of his thinking um, Sam is not on board. He does not like the idea of drinking human blood, that kind of thing. But Amy, without a doubt, is, yes, you know, um, her stating that her life is not that great. And she's bored in high school. And there's, you know, talks of jobs not being that great in the world. So what does she have left? So, of course, she does it. Um, and the book does it in glorious fashion. It, it is super 
bloody, which I mean it should be, but um, they actually don't hold back on the gore, which is kind of neat. Um, most of the book actually feels kind of like a Marvel read until you get to the the horror and stuff, um, and then it, it definitely feels like a image read. Um, but it's kind of a weird mix of the superhero vampire stuff. So in this book, in the mythos, it takes three days once you get bitten to turn into a vampire. So that's where we are right now. We are waking up three days later with Amy with her new powers. You can see that she does have like the fangs or whatever. Uh, my camera will zoom in. But um, basically, Danny's been just kind of, you know, sitting around reading, listening to podcasts. Um, but we do, do, we do see something else that Sam was also bit. And it looks like... Um, you know that he didn't have a choice like he had said no to Danny and Danny went ahead and turned him anyways there is no further discussion on that uh, at the moment but I would like to point that out um, he does state that he already has costumes on the way that Amazon should be there in a couple of hours basically by the time Danny wakes up because it's expressed that not Danny that Sam was bitten after like a couple hours after um, Amy was, which leads me to believe that he wasn't, either he was coaxed, uh, you know, by Danny, or Danny did it by, um, you know, without his consent, because basically it's stated that they can't remember, like, the last moments once they got turned, um, because it was asked if it was painful and stuff like that, but Danny could not remember when he was turned. Um, and I kind of have a feeling with that. So we do get to see them in their you new know, superhero attires, and they basically go running out on the town. They all express how it feels, like their bodies are made of rubber. They're definitely moving faster and being able to do stuff. There is a mention of jumping from rooftop to rooftop and how in the comics Batman did it so easily, but yet after you know them physically doing it and it's 60 feet worth of distance they're like how is Bruce Wayne not you know every gold medal winner in the world kind of thing um, they get to the point where Danny starts teaching them a little more basically jumping from car to car he mentions to you know Amy hey you can poof and it turn into a bat and to wolves and to mist and all you have to do is think about it and sure enough Amy does it right off the bat um, she does turn into a whole bunch of bats, and she does re make her all the bats reappear. Um, and then it's on to Sam. Um, Sam has this whole thing where he's afraid that once he turns into bats, he might not be able to get all the bats to, like, um, you know, form together to make his body reappear. As that happens, as he's, you know, being in his scared kind of thing, um, we see this scene happen right here. It doesn't make any sense, but they basically hit, uh, it, it's explained really quickly, but they basically hit an, an invisible wall. Um, in some mythos, it is said that vampires cannot cross running water, and that's what happened here. Um, they were on a bridge, and they were about to cross running water, and sure enough, like vampire lore, they, they can cross the running water. Um, it, it, it stated that there, it, it feels like an invisible wall. You can actually see Amy right here, like, or I think it's Danny that's trying to punch, you know, the barrier because it's new for him too. But they're basically learning at the time when they get to the the barrier. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's, I think it's uh, Sam that he actually checks his phone and he had been bullied being. Uh, into doing someone's, uh, this guy named Russo's homework, um, and that's kind of like this guy calling him, and he had all these unchecked messages, and basically like, hey, you're going to get your ass beat because you haven't done any of my homework, and uh, Danny's like, hey, well, let's go meet Russo now that we have these vampire powers kind of thing, um, and that's what they do. They end up going to this, like, um, basketball court where Russo hangs out, and that's Russo right here, the big guy. Um, and he's like, all right, Sam, you know, you've been missing for like three different times. It's time to get your ass beat. And uh, that's not how it goes. Basically, he introduces his friends, uh, Danny and Amy, and they basically play vampire basketball using all their speed and, you know, um, their power and stuff. And everybody on the basketball court is kind of weirded out, freaked out. They don't know what the hell's going on. Um... And they even do this kind of like thing where she throws the basketball up into space and Sam ends up catching it right in front of Russo. Russo is weirded out by all this, but he still has this belief that he's going to kick, you know, Sam's ass. But he quickly uh, learns that that's not going to happen. He is blasted in the face with this vampire, you know, um, strength and he just goes down. Um, and that's kind of where this book leaves off, um, basically, you know. Um, Sam standing over, you know, the bully guy. Um, there is a 
a uh, <clears throat> advertisement for the next issue and we see this biker guy you know vampire looking um, and that's kind of all all that's stated there is no description or nothing like that um, there is this I want to get off topic, but there is this cool advertisement for a book that Mark Millar is doing called The Ambassadors, which I am definitely going to be on board for. Um, it's called uh, The Ambassadors, 8 Billion People, 6 Can Have Superpowers, Who Do You Choose? Sounds interesting. Okay, back to the review. So these are some of my thoughts on reading the book. Um, I want to say I don't know if the detective is going to be such a fan of you know Danny giving his friends powers he was the one selecting this group of vigilantes that he was doing so we haven't got that part of it I have a feeling that's coming um, the bikers I have no no idea I imagine it's gonna be like Danny and his friends doing new vampire stuff around town and they're gonna find out that there's other you know maybe clans or gangs of of vampires that are older and maybe they have territories or something like that. I don't know. Those are my final thoughts. I'm loving it. The art, the story, everything in it. It's 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 such a great read. Um, it's fun. It's quick. Um, we are in the second issue right now. The book does sell for a dollar ninety nine. It's one of the price points of the book. Um, but it doesn't deter away from what the book actually gives you. It actually gives you a four dollar or five dollar book. Um, it is fantastic. Um, but hey, that's my thoughts. That's my this is my review. Let me know down below. Are you digging this comic? Are you liking it? Did you pass it up? Why did you pass it up? I don't. Know. But hey, that's my thoughts. Uh, let me know down below. Anything you want to tell me, I will see you for my next review. Y'all be good. Um, get out there reading. I don't know what else to say. All right, bye.